Hello, good morning. I would like to talk about some improvements regarding to the existing uh, feature, uh, this uh, digital signing in LibreOffice. Uh, I guess half of you know me already, but um, in any case, I'm from Hungary. Um, I got involved with uh, LibreOffice and previously OpenOffice uh, coding uh, due to Google Summer of Code. Um, I did a re-implementation of the writer RTF import and export filters, and ever since then, hooked into writer, uh, um, most recently doing this for Collabora. So the topic for this talk is uh, digital signature handling. So the feature itself is that uh, you can digitally sign a document and there can be two cases when you open it again. Either it wasn't altered, so you just get some hard to notice sign at the bottom of the toolbar saying that the document is correctly signed. Or in case uh, somebody nasty uh, did some nasty modification to the document behind the scenes, then you have this beautiful dialogue explaining, uh, hopefully explaining what the situation is. And the whole purpose of this digital signing is, uh, or, or this feature, is that in case the document has been modified, that this dialogue should fire, and in case it hasn't, then it should not. Um, so that's, uh, that's the primary expectations. So I would uh, go through what, um, what um, are the results of these improvements, um, what you see as a user, and then I would go into details uh, how this is actually implemented. So the first thing is that um, if you ever tr try to do uh, two signatures with the very same certificate on a document, then you might have noticed that this is not possible. Um, I guess the reason for this was that it, uh, it didn't really have any meaning uh, to sign a document twice with the same certificate. Um, so, um, because um, some customer needed, uh, wanted to have this ability, um, I came up with this concept of uh, uh, signature descriptions, which is really similar to what uh, Microsoft Office has. I guess they use it, they call it reason or role or comment or something, but they, this basically all refer to the very same thing. Um, so next to just using a certificate for signing, you can provide some string, and then it may make sense to uh, sign the very same document multiple times. Um, you can state the, the reason for the different signings in this, uh, in this string. Um, one more thing I learned later is that uh, it turns out, um, unless you are really into these uh, cryptographic things, um, you probably don't know that um, all this signing um, works with the private and public keys. Like um, you use your, your private key uh, to make it sure that it, uh, it was really you who signed it and anyone else can just uh, um, do the reverse uh, coding and verify that that was really you. But um, actually the signing here um, works with the certificate and then can be multiple certificates with the very uh, same uh, private key. Uh, at the moment, uh, LibreOffice doesn't really differentiate between these two. So in case um, you used one certificate for signing and um, you replace that certificate with another one, and in case they have the same private key, then you can replace this certificate and nobody will notice this. Usually this is not a problem because typically one certificate is one private key, but uh, in some situations this uh, difference is um, interesting. And this, that's something that can be still improved. Um, the next thing is that um, the SHA-256 support, uh, previously we only supported a SHA-1 hashing for for the hashing of the document before you actually sign it. Um, the problem is that uh, um, it, uh, it no longer has any strong, um, um, it, it's not um, considered to be legally binding anymore for quite some time now. Um, 
So to be conservative, what I did is that uh, now we can read this uh, stronger hashes, and um, after some some uh, transitive period when uh, all of the supported uh, LibreOffice versions can read this, then we can also switch on the writing of these stronger hashes. Um, and this is for the ODF case. Um, the um, OAxamol um, markup for this is much newer. That's, uh, that has a stronger hashes um, um, right from the beginning. Which leads us to the um, uh, first, um, more complex features next to this uh, signature descriptions, uh, the import of or verification of uh, OXML signatures. Uh, luckily, it's really the same markup for DOCX, XLXX, and PPTX. Um, basic, uh, the, the, but uh, what was a bit challenging here is that um, ideally, the, uh, both the ODF markup and the OXML markup is based on the very same um, W3C recommendation. Uh, but uh, that recommendation only describes um, how to what markup to use for a single signature. And it doesn't really uh, say how to uh, store any metadata, like a description or a signature date or anything. And also, it doesn't talk about how to store multiple signatures. And it's a very frequent use case that uh, a document is signed by multiple people. Um, and of course, uh, both ODF and OXML came up with their own markup for these cases which are not specified. Um, this is one thing to do. You can basically look how the ODF import and export of these signatures uh, look like, and based on that, um, and based on reading the OXML specification, you can implement something. Uh, but uh, more problematic is that um, at least the ACMA version of the OXML specification is uh, quite incomplete uh, regarding uh, digital signatures. So if you just implement what's written there, you won't get what uh, Microsoft Office does. Now, after a few days of debugging, I um, realized that uh, the ISO version has a different wording. Um, like, um, just the number of steps in the algorithm is, is already different. And if you implement the ISO version, then you get the matching hash. So, <laughs> the lesson learned, uh, you should uh, um, look at the ISO version in case you ever look at uh, something regarding OXML. Um, that's uh, more up to date. And um, in some cases like this, um, it's, um, it's um, a hard requirement to actually implement what's there. Um, so with the import or verification, that means that in case um, an OXML document has been signed, um, and we have two copies. One is uh, left unchanged, and the other one is, is just a zipped XML file, so you can change it. Um, then LibreOffice can correctly say that uh, one version is uh, signed uh, correctly, and in the other cases, raise this scary dialog. Um, um, one detail regarding the good signature is that uh, the OXML signature is not as strong as the ODF one. I'm not saying this for political reasons, it's just uh, for technical ones. Um, OXML uh, intentionally doesn't um, sign the metadata of the document, um, and that's uh, pretty problematic. We will see it later when you store your custom um, um, document properties into the document. Um, it's allowed to change these without breaking the signatures in the OXML case. That's what Microsoft Office does, and that's um, why um, the OXML filter in um, LibreOffice does the same. And um, uh, so basically, not all the streams in this uh, zip package uh, are signed. While in the ODF case, um, um, all of, really all of the streams are signed. So that um, th what th this means to you as a user is that in case you open a valid um, or correctly signed ODF, ODF document, um, even the title of the window is changed to signed and, and everything is, is perfect. But if you open a correctly signed OXML document, you get um, a small warning in the status bar saying that the certificate is correct, the, all the uh, signatures are correct, but not all the streams are signed. 
So we don't consider a valid uh, work summer document, uh, a correctly signed work summer document as a, a perfect signature. Once um, the import or the verification of these uh, work summer signatures for the next step was uh, exporting them. Um, so that's a bit harder because on import, in case um, you don't need something, then you can just ignore it. So basically, you get in this um, very rich markup um, of an OXM signature, and you just extract the details you need to be able to determine if the signature is valid or not. While on export, you are supposed basically uh, writing everything back. So you need to find out um, what uh, part of the markup specification is optional and not, and so on. Um, but at the end, I came up with something that makes uh, uh, Microsoft Office happy. Um, we, I needed to add this differentiation between ODF, where we sign all the streams, and in the OXML case, where um, the metadata is not signed. Also, what's really scary is that in, uh, OXML, or at least Microsoft Office, requires um, leaking various hardware details of your machine like your display resolution and other crazy details into the signature. And if you don't do that, then the signature is not verified by Microsoft Office. So, and of course, your Microsoft Office version and Windows version and whatever has to be laid down. That's no joking, this is serious. So, uh, what uh, LibreOffice does is that I took one configuration of a virtual machine and we do this hardwire uh, values there. So, LibreOffice won't lay the very same detail there. Uh, but we still write something uh, to make uh, Microsoft Office happy. Uh, once um, all this um, um, signature description and the OXML import and export was done, uh, the next thing um, is um, sli uh, slightly unrelated to the actual signing. Uh, this um, classification feature with the classification toolbar. Um, but we will see in a minute how the, these uh, connect together. So um, one use case is that um, you are working on an organization and you have some long legal tasks uh, you are supposed to follow. And as a human being, you probably don't understand that tax, even if it's a syntactically valid in your language. Um, so it would be, wouldn't be, it be nice if uh, LibreOffice would help you respect these rules. So one uh, solution for this is that um, there is an um, um, organization called um, TSCP, as in, uh, I guess uh, I will resolve this uh, abbreviation later. Um, and um, they produce a number of standards how to um, turn these long and hard to understand legal text into some markup that's, uh, that's um, um, machine, uh, machine uh, parsable. And also, they uh, came up with a specification how to refer to the, I, I call this a policy. And, and this policy basically contains different categories on um, if something is totally public or is something you shouldn't um, share outside the company and stuff like this. And they also came up with a specification how to refer to these policies from a document. What's really nice about this is that they are a vendor not neutral. So um, it's not a problem if LibreOffice implements this as is, because it's not tied to a single vendor. You can buy for a good amount of money, um, for example, um, a Word plugin that does something similar, but all your documents will have vendor-specific tags, so you are not allowed to change to a different vendor anymore. What we do is um, something that's um, produced by an independent um, organization producing these standards. Um, so the, the first cut is that um, uh, you have this classification toolbar. It's not enabled by default because I guess it's not interesting for most of the users, but still you just uh, uh, choose view toolbars and you can tick it in. Um, and uh, you get a toolbar where you have a dropdown where you have these categories from the policy. Uh, LibreOffice came with a very lame example policy. Uh, I came up with those names, so uh, don't take it ser seriously. 
but um, hopefully each category demonstrates some fe uh, feature of what the policy, such a policy can describe. So you get the idea and then if your organization has uh, some um, written legal tax policy, then you can turn that into um, uh, such a um, machine readable policy. Basically what it has is that um, there can be a colored line above the document that always uh, stays there as an info bar, similar to the one when you open a document read only or something. Um, and um, if it's close to green, then it's something that's um, public. If it's close to red, then it, it must be very secure. Um, then um, the policy may require that uh, you have some text in the header and the footer of each page. Um, it may require uh, some uh, watermark behind the text. Um, what else? It stores the, the um, uh, date or the timestamp of, of the actual classification, um, stuff like this. And all this is stored as a metadata of the document. That's why it's important that in ODF we sign the metadata. That means if you classify a document and you sign it, then the classification can be changed without um, um, someone else noticing. And this only works for, with ODF, not with OXML. Um, it turns out um, this specification also allows uh, multiple categories, as in um, your, your legal attacks may specify that in one case, like with communicating with one customer, this is secret, but communicating with some other customer, this is um, okay to share or something like this. Um, and actually the, the standard came up with exactly three different uh, cut, uh, um, types uh, where you can choose these categories. So the toolbar has this. Uh, but uh, it's not exactly clear um, um, how the user interface should react in case you have these conflicting category selections. So as the um, help page states, um, the user interface in LibreOffice currently just always reacts to the first uh, selected to the leftmost. Uh, selected category. So basically that's what you see as a user. And uh, the question is how, how does it work behind the scenes? So uh, as I mentioned, uh, there is a recommendation from uh, W3C, which is really just the core of a single signature. And um, we have uh, the open document format uh, I didn't check the history, but at least the current uh, 1.2 so, um, version have uh, different parts, and the third part has a section on, a digi on digital signatures file. Um, it's not very strict. It allows you to add um, new um, metadata to the signature itself. So uh, one existing metadata was an um, actual uh, timestamp of the signature. Um, but um, I added the signature description, and um, it's okay to add this. So it's not um, invalid in, in ODF terms to add um, such new metadata key value parts. Um, as I mentioned, um, the, in the OXML case, the ISO standards um, um, document this um, uh, quite um, fairly. Um, now, in case, in, from the code perspective, um, of course, I don't want to get involved much in all this heavy lifting around cryptography, because if I do this, do this there will be bugs in it, and that would be very bad for such a, um, a feature that's uh, supposed to be serious and, and so on. So uh, we, in the LibreOffice code base delegates most of the hard work to an external library called uh, LibXMLSAC, and it does the, the, the creation and the um, verification of the signature. Uh, now, next uh, level of abstraction or the next layer is that LibXMLSAC XMLSAC itself uh, doesn't uh, implement uh, all the cryptography itself, um, but it has different backends. And on Windows, there is some native Microsoft API to do this. And on Linux and Mac OS, um, currently we use the NSS library from Mozilla. Uh, probably for the macOS users, this is pretty terrible because I'm sure there is some native API and um, and um, that's um, the current situation is quite suboptimal, but at least it's something working. Um, 
On Linux, it's, um, it's again a bit uh, more and more uh, not very general that everyone has a valid Firefox or Mozilla profile, but at least it's not uh, as weird as on Mac OS. Um, so the, I wish that uh, Libraxx um, um provides everything that I need for, for the features I presented earlier. Uh, the problem, is, of course, it does not. So um, uh, these are just comment messages I uh, sent um, the Libaxamasak external. The most um, important part was that uh, the OXML specification um, defines a new uh, algorithm, as in basically it's just an XML identifier and a description how um, an XML tree of no, no, three nodes uh, should be transformed to something else, that's an, an, an algorithm in W3C terms. And um, the OXML specification uh, defines an algorithm, how to filter out the metadata from, uh, from the document before you actually uh, hash it and sign it. And uh, because all the algorithms are handled inside LibXMASAC, I had to implement it there. Um, which means writing C code that pleases not only GCC and Clang, but also um, MSVC, um, where the C support is not updated in the past uh, 15 years or something, because customers are not interested in that. So that's uh, very much funny. Uh, but at the end, I came up with something that uh, implements the um, uh, specification and even builds on every platform we care for. By we care for, I mean, it turns out it's mostly only LibreOffice that cares about the Windows uh, part of LibreOffice, which is very sad. Again, a situation when I touched this something and now I'm called as the go-to guy for any issues. Um, at least they didn't use the word maintainer. Uh, so <laughs> I had to fix up uh, the, um, the Windows build in the next release that incorporated this, um, this uh, relationship transform algorithm because the maintainer uh, tests only on Linux and Mac OS. Uh, so that um, um, included the, um, fixing a problem that um, the Libaxama ha SAC has uh, two build systems. Have you ever heard about such a problem in a project, having two different build systems? So uh, they do have, they use Autocom for, for Linux and Mac OS, and um, they have some um, handcrafted make file for Windows. And when the configure was um, adapted, then the Windows make file wasn't, and um, this way it didn't build. Um, then um, we had some patches uh, for the newer Visual Studio version, and uh, those were not upstream. So that's um, now also included in the latest upstream rele release. Um, and also there were some changes around um, how you uh, select these different backends. Um, in the LibreOffice case, we always use a single backend, but uh, at build time, you could build LibreOffice in a way so that you can select the backend at runtime. And again, the maintainer is only interested in, in the case when you choose the runtime, uh, the backend at runtime, but of course, we go with the other path where we choose the backend at build time. So that means on Windows, um, this uh, um, selecting of the runtime at build time uh, was, uh, resulting in a build failure. Uh, so after my struggling, you know, um, I managed to rebase all our Libaxama patches on top of the latest upstream release, and also all my additional patches I had in the LibreOffice core app where I upstream, uh, are upstream. Uh, so basically, this explains how, how the ODF signing um, it was extended and, and implemented, even in the technical terms. Uh, now, the next problem was that um, LibreOffice had this assumption that um, um, that um, in case a document can be signed, then it must be ODF, because that's the only format supporting signing. Um, but I wanted to add the, this OXML support, so I introduced a new filter flag uh, called support signing, and in case uh, we are not ODF, but this flag is set, then we still attempt to sign. Um, 
we still um, ac um, assume that in case we can sign something that's zipped XML, because that's true for all XML and ODF. But in case uh, later we would like to do, I don't know, open a PDF file in row and sign it, for example, then uh, that would be yet another thing to, uh, to fix, because currently we assume zipped XML. Um, the description feature isn't uh, really, really complicated. In the ODF case, as I mentioned, you could add the new metadata without uh, break, without generating invalid ODF. Um, and also, um, it's important that uh, a in case a document has some signatures already, then you have to round trip it 100% uh, perfectly, otherwise the hash will be broken. So for that reason, in case the description is empty, then we just don't, just don't write it. And this way, uh, previous uh, signatures which don't have a description are also run um, correctly. The OXML case was easier because that wasn't supported earlier. And also, an OXML mandates this um, comment or description. Um, the um, actual code that generates um, the um, markup for the OXML signature and, and the parser is uh, pretty straightforward. There are not many complicated things there. Under the XML security module, there is a dedicated uh, class that handles these um, uh, SAX events, and there is a serializer that, um, that um, actually writes the markup. Uh, the classification toolbar is basically just um, a user interface. You could go to file properties and uh, put and then send all these um, um, properties of the classification yourself, and you can change it. So it's, um, it's not a secret that uh, you can break it. The whole purpose of the feature is to help you in case you are willing to uh, re um, follow some, some policy in any way. Um, so it's not hidden from these um, um, uh, custom document properties or anything. And as I mentioned, um, the organization that, that came up with this specification is this uh, trans -Global Secure Collaboration Program. Um, they are actually a company, even if it's a program. And um, there is a, a framework for how to describe these, uh, these legal text uh, in some technical form. This is the BAF. And the other relevant specification from them is how to refer to these uh, specifications um, from the documents, and the, the, that's the BAMS specification. So basically, the, the, ver the flow is that you have the legal text, then you turn it into a policy, and then LibreOffice embeds these BAMS key value parts into your documents, and they, you are inflected. So uh, all this work that I presented here was supported by the Dutch military, which is really great because Collabor is a consulting company, so somebody has to pay for the work we do. And then concludes my talk. Thanks for your attention.